Lately, it feels like everyone is making money online, drives a sports car, has a designer bag, or a luxury apartment. It's obvious that people no longer want to work labor-intensive, long hours, normal jobs because why would they? In this video, we're going to be finding out and investigating if this is done intentionally by the powerful elite or if this is just the next natural part of the cycle. Before we get started, I want to take a journey with you. I want you to imagine this. Imagine a life where you never go against the grain, one where you just always shut up and you always listen. What would your life look like? Well, let me tell you a story about me, my personal story of when I was 19 years old and what my life would have looked like. I was 19, I was a freshman in college, and I knew I didn't want to be there. I was miserable. The schoolwork drove me absolutely nuts. I didn't understand it, nor did I care about it. But I was there to please my parents. I was drowning out my problems with weed and alcohol on the weekends just to wake up Monday morning depressed, ready to do it all over again. My roommate and I didn't get along at all. He ended up snitching on me for having alcohol. This either led me to drop out or take alcohol classes. And I'm not an alcoholic, so obviously I'm not going to do that. So I was left with no other choice than to drop out. Looking back in retrospect, this was God's timing. So I dropped out and with trial and error over the past four or five years, I now have multiple businesses that bring me in over hundreds of thousands of dollars yearly. If I never dropped out, if I never walked off the path, I probably would have just graduated college and had a normal corporate job. One decision changed it all. So let's talk about why everyone is quitting their jobs. And if you stay till the end, I'm going to tell you guys something that is absolutely going to blow your mind that no one has ever told you and you will literally not be able to believe. There's heaps of reasons why someone shouldn't want to work a labor intensive job. I myself have worked labor intensive jobs at Little Caesars, Target, Bus Boys, Landscaping, and I and hated them. My thought process throughout school and throughout work was always, this is my life. Why would I spend it making somebody else richer? And more and more people are starting to have the same exact thought process. People don't want to be treated poorly. That's obvious. And corporate CEOs simply just do not care how you feel. Just listen to this video of a CEO stating that we need employees to feel that they are lucky to have our jobs by hurting the economy. I mean, we need to remind people that they work for the employer, not the other way around. I mean, there is a there's been a systematic change where employees feel the employer is extremely lucky to have them um, as opposed to the other way around. So it's a dynamic that has to change. We've got to kill that attitude and that has to come through hurting the economy. So with employers looking at their employees as literal cattle, why would we want to work for them? Some people are just unable to escape the cycle. There are too much debt, they have car payments, insurance, and they have kids, and they depend on their work's paycheck to survive, just as the system intended for them to end up. Gen Z is the first real generation that has been fully able to capitalize off of this opportunity. We have kids making thousands of dollars a month just posting movie clips on a TikTok. YouTubers making millions just from making videos. And not to mention OnlyFans models literally making money off of just taking pictures. Wow, at the same time, we have people who are working 80 hours a week losing their homes. So like I said, give me a few moments and I'm going to explain something that you could have never imagined. So how is this happening? A simple look at the foreclosure rates that are increasing by 10% year after year should have us all very concerned. But with rising interest rates, 7.5% currently, which is absolutely fucking bonkers, people cannot afford to buy a house. So that means a $200,000 house has $15,000 of interest per year, times that by a 30-year mortgage, which is the standard, you are now paying $450,000 in interest alone. So that $200,000 house just became a $650,000 house. Why the hell are the rates so high, you're asking? Big thank you to the Federal Reserve. A majority of people are totally unaware of the fact that the Federal Reserve is a privately owned company, meaning that our government buys our money from the Federal Reserve. That means the Federal Reserve can print a $100 bill for a fraction of a cent and be paid $100 for it. Please let that sink in. So if the Federal Reserve is the one controlling the money, it also means they're the ones controlling the interest rates. And look at this quote from the early 1900s. If the American people ever allow private banks to control the issue of their currency, first by inflation, then by deflation, the banks and corporations will grow up around them, will the Drive the people of all of their property until their children wake up homeless on the continent their fathers conquered. Side note, wait until you actually find out who caused the Titanic to sink. Let's just say there are people out there who oppose the Federal Reserve because they saw the corruption, so the founders had to get rid of some people. I mean, think about it. The Titanic sunk in 1912, the Federal Reserve was created in 1913. If this video gets 500 likes, I'll make a video on exactly why the Titanic was sunk. But why do you think the Titanic movie was made? to protect the real reason why it's sunk. Why do you think we were hardly informed on the Federal Reserve throughout school? Well, that's easy, but we'll talk about these another time. In short, the Federal Reserve is the one who's creating the housing market crisis and the people who own the Federal Reserve, which names I can't mention. They're doing this on purpose so companies like BlackRock 
can own your home. This is why so many people are being forced to live in apartments and in the inner city. This is exactly what they want for more control. Because when you live in an inner city, you don't have much freedom. They control what you're eating, they control where you go, because when you're in an inner city, you don't have that much control. I mean, let's look at food alone. It's not like you can grow food in your apartment. You're completely reliant on the food chain, the supply chain, and whatever food is brought into your city to feed you. You have no jurisdiction of what you're being fed. Not to mention they are not making nearly enough single home families to keep up with the rising population. Just look at this. Home construction has fallen by 55% since 2006. And let me just state for the record that there are 2.4 billion acres of land in America, and you can Google this yourself. And if you divide that 2.4 billion acres of land divided by 300 million, which is how many US citizens there are. That number comes out to eight, meaning that every single American citizen could have eight acres of land to themselves for a garden, chickens, cows, whatever you fucking want could fit onto that property, that plot of land. But they want you to think that we're overpopulated by pushing you into every big city possible. It all comes back to this. This is a reoccurring theme and you really need to question why. Now, take a look at this. With insane inflations, Wages would have to be very high to keep us at the same pace. In 1973, the minimum wage was $4.03. Now you're probably sounding like, holy shit, that's nothing. Well, here's the thing. Calculated for inflation, $4.03 in 1973 is $24 in today's money. Meaning that if you're not making more than $24 an hour, you are making less than minimum wage. Now you take this into consideration and then you look at the majority of people who are making $10, $12 an hour, and some people boasting about the fact that they make $20 an hour when you're literally getting paid less than minimum wage. Like I said, this is all done intentionally to force people into apartments, the inner cities, make the landlords even more money and strip you of your freedoms. Basically our only option is to work for ourselves. We can't rely on these numbers to get us to where we wanna be. But if everyone quit their job, obviously the economy would collapse. We wouldn't be able to do things that we enjoy. We wouldn't be able to go get groceries. We wouldn't go to amusement parks. We wouldn't go to the movies. Nothing would be the same if everyone just quit their job. Luckily for you, there is a 0% chance everyone quits their jobs. And there's a 0% chance everyone in the world will see this video. So we don't have to worry. So I know there's gonna be people in the comments, if everyone quit their job, I'm aware. But a majority of people don't even see quitting their job as an option. And what people don't understand is that money is literally infinite. So let's talk about abundance. The simple answer for a life well lived is abundance. Money is far from a resource like time. You can't just print more time, but you can print money endlessly. Therefore, money is infinite. This is why you must use your money as a tool. You must detach from it. You may not let it be your master. Money is around you and it's everywhere. You are literally one good idea away from becoming a millionaire. Most of us have a million dollar idea that we thought of, but we just didn't believe in ourselves. We never gave it the energy that it deserved. All riches first begin with belief. And if you do not believe you will be rich, you will stay poor forever. If you do not think you are worthy of being rich, you aren't. And a lot of people think that it's money first, then it's confidence, but it's the exact opposite. All right, now before you go, because your attention span is dwindling, this is the most important part of this video. And this is how we're gonna wrap it up. Yes, it's great to be aware of all of these things that are going on in the world and who's really pulling the strings and making the differences in our lives, our immediate lives, when we didn't really consent to it. At the bottom line, this is a game that we all must be playing. And it really just depends on how well do you wanna play it. Do you want to be a sore loser and just take your loss and say, this, this is dumb, I don't want to participate? Or do you want to be someone who stares the challenge in the face and you take the challenge head on and say, I am actually going to put in the work that is necessary for me to make changes in my own life, just like I did. I could have easily thrown in the towel, become a victim, and said the system is unfair, the system is rigged. But rather than being a loser, having the loser mentality and the victim mentality, I looked the challenge directly in the face and I said, I am going to create a life of my own design. And you can do the exact same thing once you say you can, once you believe you can. Stop making excuses, stop being a victim because we are all are dealt these shitty cards, all of us. Some are shittier than others, some are better than others. It doesn't matter. It's about how you play the cards that you were dealt. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I'm going to be giving $500 away to someone who makes a clip of this video, puts it on the TikTok, and whoever gets the most views on that clip from this video, tagging Alex Sedlak on TikTok, will get $500. Just make sure to tag my accounts, make a good clip from this video, and $500 could be yours. I'm doing this at the end of every single new video. This is a great way for you guys to make money and a great way to grow this channel because more people need to hear this message. Appreciate every single one of you. And if you haven't subscribed, don't forget to because I'm going to continue to deliver sauce and try to help you guys as much as I can in the process. Much love.